Thank you for joining us in Finding God in the World of Video Games. We're going to do a family episode because someone's already done with their nap. So I want to talk about Animal Crossing today. A lot of uh, everyone's probably playing this. If you have a Switch, it already exceeded the entire lifetime sales that were planned for this title in just a few short months. And I would say that this, I thought this would be a safe space for me. You know, as, as a gamer, I'm, I'm used to losing in a lot of video games. I lose when I play Halo 5, often, especially depending on who I'm playing with. I've, I've I had a really tough time getting through Jedi Fallen Order. Those last couple of bosses, they, uh, there's a lot of prayer time in between That's several of them. They were, they were really rough times. <laughs> I think I beat a video game in between them just just because I couldn't move past it. But in Animal Crossing, I expected that this would be a, a non-competitive, safe, friendly environment. You don't think of Animal Crossing and think of the opportunity to lose. But, but somehow we, well, I found a way. All right, for those of you who haven't played Animal Crossing or have never tried the couch co-op multiplayer, the primary character plays the game the same way as they would while playing solo, but the secondary character is significantly different. They can't access their full inventory or anything they catch, pick up, or find is placed into a community chest for safekeeping. That's, that's a very important piece of information. So we were playing together on couch co-op on our same island and she was the primary character and I was fishing and catching bugs and I was trying to save up enough money to do the next upgrade to my house which was significantly behind someone else's in terms of development and we have a normal protocol that at the end of our play session we would go cash everything in and go get to what you had gotten out of the community chest and, and cash that in to, in order to get your bells. Well, while she was cashing out, I was just checking my phone and, and probably checking social media emails. I don't know. But what I do know is this, that when it was my turn to get everything that I had got out of the community chest, I noticed that it was a mysteriously empty and void of all of the contents that, uh, that I had procured over the night. No way. I, I didn't know. See what happened was. What happened was? <laughs> I didn't know that the same community chest was the same for everyone. I thought what each had community her own. meant community. I thought it was like your Communal. own chest. And you, I thought, apparently you thought it was your own chest because all my stuff was gone. But she probably most she may have known that. I know there's no way you thought all those red snappers were yours because you didn't catch any. That was me. I thought that was strange. Well, we're we're in a better place now. We've done some online counseling, and most importantly, we we've, we've set up some 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 rules to help prevent that from happening in the future. Well, you know, the Christian life can oftentimes feel more like losing in a situation where it should have been a safe environment and win-win as well. I've, I've read so many books, watch sermons, I, I, I see videos, and I get the impression that I'm supposed to be living this incredibly victorious Christian life. Once I accepted Jesus as my Savior, it should be all just rainbows and butterflies and everything should be great. And, and yet it doesn't always feel that way. And I honestly thought maybe I was doing something wrong until I considered that we follow a savior who was mercilessly beaten and murdered just days after they threw a victory parade for him. So maybe there's something there. As you look deeper in the Old and New Testament, we find that it was full of losing. Many of our favorite stories involve incredible loss from people that we have I know personally, I have idolized as I grew up as major Christian figures I wanted to emulate. They experience entire seasons of defeat and pain and losing. So whether you've lost your job, which is very common for a lot of people right now, or a loved one, you lost your health, you're not alone. There's a precedent for the pain you're experiencing and a plan for what you're going through. So to remove some of the stigma attached to losing, we want to take a look and see it for what it really is in our lives. And to do that, we're going to take a look at King David. Although the section we're going to look at in 1 Samuel 30, he's not quite keen yet. Now David was on the run from King Saul with a major bounty on his head. And he had picked up some work for himself and his loyal troops as a mercenary for the Philistines. Now it wasn't great work, but it paid the bills. Correction, it, it really did. Yes, the past <laughs> tense paid the bills. At this point, we find him, he's just lost his job, and he's headed home with all of his troops to tell their families about this horrible occurrence when they see something far worse on the horizon, smoke arising from the city where their family lived. And when they got there, they found that the entire village had been burned to the ground. His family was all gone. Every There were no, there was no people there. 
There weren't no bodies either, which is good, but they had no idea what was happening, and who knows? Maybe a fate worse than death awaited their loved ones. David was in a really tough point. He, his troops were on the brink of mutiny. They had just lost their job. They lost everyone they loved. And honestly, they were kind of holding David accountable for this. And we see in David's response the way that we need to also respond as believers when similar losing circumstances happen in our life. In chapter 30, verses 6 through 8, we see David strengthening himself in the Lord and inquiring of him what he should do next. Now, it would have been easy to either do what I would normally do, just immediately take action without thinking and potentially head off the wrong direction for who knows how long and waste the opportunity of caught these people that did this. Or he could have just sat and mourned and felt sorry for himself and they could have thrown a big pity party. Both of those were viable options. He didn't either. Instead, he decided he was going to pray, seek God's guidance, and strengthen himself in his relations with the Lord, realizing that he was in control. David was guided to a fallen enemy, and in the circumstance, they were able to not only find where their families had been taken, but they were able to recover all of their family members, everything that was lost, and they defeated these people who had done this. The bigger moment here, though, is that for David, this was his final test before he actually fulfilled his destiny of becoming king, his, his last job interview if you will, so that the Lord could see what his response would be when things would go wrong, and when you're keen, things are probably going to go wrong. I do want to emphasize that in our Animal Crossing game, my wife did make this right. She, she did her due diligence, worked hard, got some bells to kind of repay back what she had improperly removed. I'm more than paid back. I don't know if it covered all of my pain and suffering and, and emotional anguish and trauma. <laughs> and there were shipping and handling charges too. But I will tell you that I'm, I'm keeping an eye on that chest going forward to make sure it's not accidentally communityed again. Yeah, just so you know, every morning the first thing he does is hop on, go look inside the community chest and take whatever was in there, leaving me nothing behind. I left you the moldy dress that one time. Thanks! Some cardboard boxes. <laughs> yeah. I thought that they were of a great value. And the moldy wallpaper. Very reasonable price. I do want to say this isn't always a guarantee that the Lord is going to restore everything that we lose. King David didn't always win. He lost his first wife. He lost his best friend. He lost several children, and, and not everything was restored to him. But in this case, we find an example that the bad news we receive and the setbacks we endure may actually lead us down the path of not only truly appreciating what we had, but can lead us towards the destiny that has been promised. And our response to these setbacks reveals how prepared we are for the next step in our journey. For those who have placed their trust in Christ, losing is always a temporary state. And our prayerful and submitted response to Christ in the middle of these challenges often acts as the accelerant towards the next step that he has planned for our lives.